Well, hello, my name is Jim Vandersteeg, and I'm the CEO of Covenant Health. And uh, I've got a guest here with me today. He's not a whole lot of a guest. A lot of you know him. He's the chief medical officer of Covenant Health and a good friend of mine, as well as many of yours. Um, I want to, uh, we're going to have a discussion. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm here with an expert. <clears throat> Obviously, Dr. Brown is a physician, um, a well-trained physician. And uh, he and I are going to talk for a few minutes about vaccinations and uh, a lot of information, Dr. Brown, Absolutely. that's out there today. Um, a lot of people getting information from a lot of different sources. And so <clears throat> I thought it would be helpful if um, you could just kind of come into our conversation is, is I've got a list of questions. Some of these are questions that you got, some of the questions I got, and really just some questions we're just hearing from uh, people in the community as well as, as employees. And so uh, we're going to spend a few minutes and just kind of talk about this. Um, I also want to take a moment and tell you thank you. I know uh, right now is one of the most challenging times we've ever had in healthcare. Um, obviously, we had very significant COVID uh, last year and through January and February. Um, we're now um, having another increase in COVID um, on top of just really, in all honesty, the regular job you do every day. So I want to tell you thank you for that. Um, appreciate what you do. I appreciate the challenges um, that you're having um, doing your work every day, as well as family life. So again, um, thank you from the heart of Covenant Health and from all the leaders for what you do. So with that, I'm going to switch over right. to Dr. Brown. And uh, if you don't mind, I've got some questions that Absolutely. I, that I want to kind of ask you and get some of your professional opinion. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just real quickly tell you my story. So um, Back in December of last year, I got COVID mm -hmm. and I actually got a pretty serious case of COVID. Um, and uh, uh, some of my friends at Covenant and uh, my personal physician was also kind of watching me and and uh, I, I ended up getting infused. And um, then I guess maybe about 120 days or so after that, I got vaccinated. So I've had COVID, I've been infused and I've been vaccinated. So I'm probably hopefully one of the more safe people in the community. But um, again, there's a lot of questions around COVID right now. So sure. let me start out with the first one. <clears throat> um, as an employee, why should I get vaccinated and is it really safe? It's a great question. Uh, I'll sort of start with the punchline. I'll probably end with this yeah. at the end of our conversation too, Jim. Really right now, the vaccine is the single tool, the COVID-19 vaccine is the single tool that gives the greatest benefit with okay. all the other things, all the other advances, all the other medicines that we've come up with or, or reutilized for different, from different sources, uh, the vaccine is the only thing that's been shown to decrease severe illness, okay. decrease hospitalizations, and in the original studies by as much as 95 or 96% decrease wow. in hospitalizations, and to almost eliminate death from COVID if you've had the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Your chances of becoming severely ill if you've been vaccinated with any of the vaccines are much, much, much reduced, sometimes as much by 88 to 95%. Wonderful. So it, it really has been shown to dramatically decrease your chances of getting sick. I want to touch on something from yeah. your story. Yeah. You know, I get a lot of questions about, well, I've already had COVID. Right. right. What, what do I still need to get vaccinated? And there was literally just a study that came out yesterday. Now you hear me say that a lot. Yep. A study I, came I out do. yesterday. Yep. I tell you about Changes every day. Every day right? like, yep. A study came out yesterday that showed they compared <clears throat> people who had been infected with COVID and not vaccinated and people who had been vaccinated okay. and people who had been fully vaccinated were two and a half times less likely to get reinfected mm. with COVID now that we're seeing the Delta variant coming around. Uh, so although natural immunity does have a place and we have seen a decrease in your risk, if you have been infected, your risk is more, more decreased. That wasn't said very well, but decreased to a greater degree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if you have the vaccine okay. than if you've been infected. Okay. So I'm going to guess you've been vaccinated. I have been. Okay. All right. I got it as soon as I could. <laughs> um, kind of my next question, <clears throat> can I still get COVID even if I get vaccinated? Um, and if so, why get the vaccine? Yeah, a, a great question. So I'll do a little bit of science. I'll get a little yep. nerdy. So yep. all viruses mutate. You hear about the different variants. You know, the... There was originally what they call the ancestral variant, then the alpha, then the beta, which was in South Africa, now the delta variant. And there will be more because that's what viruses do. Viruses change, and in general, they become more contagious, but less lethal okay. right? because viruses need us to survive. They're parasites. Mm -hmm. And if they get 
too lethal or not contagious enough. They can't get to and from the host or yeah. they'll kill all their hosts. So they're, it's the normal course of viruses to do what this virus is doing, I guess is my message. Okay. Uh, and so this virus has now mutated to the point that even when you're vaccinated, there is still a chance of becoming infected. But there's a couple of really important things. Number one, you have a much less chance of getting infected, even with the Delta variant, if you've been vaccinated. Yeah. If you do develop an infection, your chances of being hospitalized or, you know, or dying or succumbing to the disease are greatly, greatly diminished. Yeah. And if you do get infected, your course of your illness will be less. You know, we've seen a fair number of our employees who have, uh, and, and community workers, community colleagues, who have gotten infected with what we assume is the Delta variant. We don't test everybody for the Delta variant. But they have been previously vaccinated. But the normal course that we're seeing is the, a cold, yeah. a flu, a couple days of illness. You know, compare and contrast that with the people that we are now seeing in the hospital. Almost all of them are unvaccinated patients. Yeah, yeah. And, and to your point, even from our own information, um, our experience in our own hospitals, a very low percent of the individuals that end up getting admitted mm -hmm. um, were folks that uh, were not vaccinated. So if you've been vaccinated, very low chance in, in our own experience that you're going to get correct. admitted. And, um, and those that were admitted and were vaccinated either yeah. had diseases that compromised yeah. their immune <clears throat> system or they were older. Very good. So so here's a question I've, I've actually heard a lot and I've actually had my family ask mm -hmm. me this question. Um, what about the long term side effects? Um, I, I hear uh, more coming from younger men. Can it hurt my heart? Mm -hmm. Obviously hearing more from younger women. Um, uh, will this affect my uh, ability to have a child? Right. So a couple of great questions. So first, the vaccine has been out for about 18 months, two years, this individual vaccine. Uh, but the vaccine has been studied for a long time. So I hope we talk about that. I'll put a yeah. little comment there. <clears throat> we can maybe yeah. come back to that uh, because it is, it has been studied quite a bit. But because it's only been several years, you know, we, we have several years of history to look mm -hmm. back on. The flip side of that is we have hundreds of millions of patients in that period of time. So we have a much greater population of patients than we've ever had in any study ever to look at these mm -hmm. type of side effects. So having said that, uh, let's talk about fertility and childbearing yeah. and those sort of things first. Yeah. Um, all the major medical societies that focus on women's health, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, uh, the... Uh, Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine. They all strongly recommend vaccination for women of childbearing years and for pregnant women. We know that especially in pregnant women, if they get COVID, they tend to have a more severe course. Hmm. So certainly that's a population we want to see vac vaccinated. There hasn't been any study that shows any decrease in fertility for women or for men. I get that mm. question too. Yeah. You know, is yeah. it going to affect my fertility <clears throat> of a man? And I want to have kids later, you know, have my wife, my wife have children later in life. Uh, so there's no studies that support that whatsoever. Um, so that's a really interesting what you just said. Yeah, you know, I know I know people get information from lots of different sources, mm -hmm. right? They they get it from friends, they right. get it from maybe some from the news, um, other sources, so, social media, right? <clears throat> and um, you know, it, it seems like they act like there's more data that shows that's true. And, and there really hasn't <clears throat> been any data that shows that's true. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're a, a woman of childbearing years, that's a concern. But the data that we have so far yeah. shows it to be very safe, and okay. it is recommended okay. by every major medical society that supports okay. that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about myocarditis, yeah. heart inflammation. Right, right. And I'll put it in layman's terms. <clears throat> there have been some documented cases, particularly in males between the ages of 18 and 30, where they've gotten some inflammation of their heart after the second dose of either the Pfizer mm -hmm. or Moderna vaccines. It's relatively rare, and we're between 26 and 55 cases per million, so it's a very rare occurrence. It's not a heart attack, mm -hmm. uh, and it hasn't been shown to cause any long-term effects on your heart. It's, it's kind of like a pulled muscle in your heart, yeah. for lack of a better yeah. uh, explanation, it's a, but it's an immune inflammation of your heart because your immune system is ramped up okay. by the vaccine. But it's generally transient, can be treated usually with very minor interventions, if some of these folks have been admitted to the hospital, but yeah. more of it is kind of precautionary. They've developed chest pain. Let's make sure it's not something yeah. serious. <clears throat> so even those who have developed that, it's been relatively mild in its course. 
Very good. Well, I think that's helpful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Again, as we were, we were stating, a lot of information out there, a lot of maybe misinformation as well. Um, ne next question. If I get the vaccine, will I shed virus? By the way, a lot of people may not know what that means, so maybe right. you want to talk about that. Sure. Will I shed virus and get other people sick if I get the vaccine? So the short answer is you can't get other <clears throat> people sick when you get the vaccine. Okay. It sometimes feels like you're getting sick when you get the vaccine, particularly after the second shot. We've seen some people who get headaches and muscle soreness and sometimes even fevers, but you aren't getting sick because you have the virus. There is no living virus okay. in the vaccine. The vaccine teaches your body to make a protein that, that looks like a protein on the outside of the virus, and it causes that immune response. So you're not shedding any active okay. virus. You can't get anybody sick from okay. the vaccine. Okay. That's, that's very helpful. Another rumor, Another rumor. Uh, that you hear on social media. Uh, kind of next question. <clears throat> Will the COVID vaccine make me test positive for COVID? Great question. I hear that a lot. Uh, the short answer is no, it won't. I know people are concerned about that with wanting to travel again. Right. You know, wanting to go see their loved ones. And will it will it potentially give a false positive on a test? And without getting into all the science and if anybody wants to come talk about the science, give me a call. I'm always happy to do it. He uh, actually is. I, I really am. Uh, <clears throat> but the short answer is no. It can't. Okay. It cannot cause you to test positive on any of the tests. Okay. The antigen test, the antibody test, the PCR test, okay. all those other tests you've heard okay. about. Um, uh, next question. Um, how long will my immunity last if I get the vaccine? Uh, and then will I potentially need a booster? Great questions. The, the, the booster questions come up a lot recently, so I'll take that one last. So the... The science, the studies have shown at least six months of immunity from okay. the three major vaccines, the Janssen, the Pfizer, and the Moderna. Uh, the science behind it would lead you to believe it's probably going to be longer than that, but we haven't had enough time to formally study it. So the, the formal scientific word is at least six months. Okay. And the, there's, a, again, a paper that came out last week from Moderna showing a 93% efficacy at six months. So still very, very highly effective. Yeah. We're not talking about 40 yeah. or 60% effective yeah. like some flu vaccines in the past. Yeah. Still very highly effective, not just small e effective. Uh, the booster is an interesting question. There, there are some folks who believe that boosters may ultimately be necessary. But I go back to my science lesson a little bit ago. Yeah. Viruses mutate. Viruses create variants. And the reason boosters are necessary is twofold. Number one your body creates these cells called B cells, which have the memory of what made you sick. Okay. And over time, those B cells wane even after immunity. So some diseases require a booster to give you a memory booster, if okay. you will. That's what a booster shot does and why you have to get a flu shot every year and, and mm. some of, you, know, you get a, yeah. a booster of the measles vaccine, those sort of things. Uh, those are the reasons that you get those booster shots. We don't know yet if you're going to need a booster. It's okay. kind of a... Uh, Active discussion. There's actually a meeting this Friday with the ACIP, which is the National Immunization Committee, that's going to look at booster shots in patients who have organ transplants. There is a study that came out this yeah. week in New England Journal that says those patients who are immunosuppressed may benefit from a third dose. But in the general population, the jury's still out. Today, it's not indicated, but we're watching the science really okay. closely. Okay. Well, that's very helpful. Um, kind of next question. I have an underlying medical condition. Can I or should I still get the vaccine? Yeah. If you have an underlying medical condition, now look at the camera for this yeah. one. Um, you are the population that is at highest risk for getting COVID disease. So absolutely, you should strongly consider, talk to your provider, obviously, because every person is different, but you should strongly consider getting the vaccine. There are very, very few medical contraindications, okay. uh, even so, more so than other vaccines or less so than other vaccines, I guess I should say. Uh, so strongly, strongly urge you to talk to your provider about Good. that. We've seen a couple of folks recently saying, oh, well, I've had you know, a chronic illness. My doctor said maybe I ought to think about not getting it. Well, that's not necessarily the best advice. You really need okay. to think strongly about it because those are the patients we see get the most severe COVID illness. Okay. Um, last question before, I know there's some closing comments, and but this this is one I've heard so many times. It's It's this whole thought that, um, it's new, right? The, 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 how it was created is new, right. never been done before. And, and obviously you can understand why that creates concern in the minds of people of, 
the, the way this, you know, at least I think two of the vaccines right. are made, the most dominant ones were made was from a different process, new process. And just a lot of concern of, you know, since it's so new, you know, do we know a whole lot? And right. so um, based on that, you know, maybe I should wait a while and, and see what ultimately happens with people that have gotten the vaccine. So right. what, what would your what would your response? Is this, is this such a new thing, this, the process of making this vaccine? The short answer is the technology behind this is not really new at all. Okay. Uh, if you look back, when did this sort of journey towards mRNA, those are the two vaccines you're talking about, Pfizer and Moderna, yeah. when did it start? It literally started in the early 90s. When I graduated from medical school, Jim, that's how long ago it was, right? 1991 was about the time it yeah. started. It's, it's well, been a while. It's a few years ago. It's been a few years ago, <laughs> three decades. So literally it was three decades when the, the Are you lead old? scientist, uh, well. Okay, let's check. You can ask that question on camera. I'll ask you the same. So, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> we're close to the same age, okay. my contemporary. Um, but yeah, it started about three decades ago with four or five different scientists with different parts of yeah. the vaccine. So the science behind it has really been around a long time. And okay. even though it felt like it came to market quickly, because it did come to market yeah. quickly because of political investments and a lot of other things that were, you know, there's a lot of dollars thrown into it from the federal government that accelerated bringing it to market faster. But the mRNA technology has been around for 30 plus years. Okay. And, and the actual vaccine studies began about 12 or 13 years ago. So it really was, it's not a brand new vaccine by any stretch of the imagination. And it's been studied literally in hospitals and laboratories around the world yeah. by some of the best, most respected scientists yeah. in their fields. So it, it's really kind of a fascinating story. And I'll tell you at some time about how all the things that had to come together at the same yeah. time for this vaccine to be able to be available when it was available. And there was truly a little bit of divine intervention, yeah. I believe. So yeah. it, it, it was really great. Well, I think that's a really important detail to understand. I mean, while the vaccines are new vaccines, right. the methodology of how they were developed is not a new methodology. Because I remember when I first started hearing about it, it was, well, we've, they've never been developed this way before. Right. That's just not correct. And so um, hopefully, as you know, I know a lot of people continue to look at making decisions. Hopefully they'll, under, they'll understand that. And that'll be a good right. fact for them to have as they make their decision. So... Kind of the last thing I wanted to do uh, in, in kind of a closing comment is, you know, we are having employees right now who, who a combination, I hope, hearing some of the information that you've shared, which I think is very helpful because it's very scientific based, it's very truthful, or a combination of that and, 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 and as your peers maybe are making decisions now more and more to get vaccinated, um, you know, a question you might have and uh, is I want it now. I'm ready. What do I do? And I know one of the things that we have is a, we have a call center, a call number um, for those of you who are, who are ready and, and now want to take the vaccine, vaccination. It's 865 374 6159. So there's a phone number, but I, I would also say across our organization, um, and for a lot of you already know this, if, if you're ready for the vaccination, if you don't remember the number, I, well, maybe we'll try to put it on the screen ultimately, but if you don't remember it, um, right. you can go to leadership throughout our organizations and say, hey, I wanna have a vaccine, uh, I'm ready to be vaccinated and we'll work through that. So um, I just want Mark, Dr. Brown, thank yeah. you for, thank you for your it. time. Um, Dr. Brown is, um, is not only an expert for Covenant Health, um, he ends up on news stations quite frequently. He ends up on the Halloran Hilton Hill show quite frequently. Um, again, because there's so much information that's being uh, sent out there in different forms, I think more and more people are saying, I'd like to have a trusted source that will use data, will use science and help me understand, help make this decision. So, you know, thank you for, for being here. My pleasure. Um, again, to all of my, our teammates across our, our system, um, I know the two of us can't really tell you how much we appreciate you Absolutely. and, and uh, the fact that um, you make a difference every day. And so um, I do hope uh, in full transparency, this will encourage more of my teammates to consider um, getting the vaccine. Because I think at the end of the day, when I know for me personally, on one hand, when I weigh the risk on this side and I say, what if I don't get it? When I look at those risks, whether those were personal risks or risks to my family and loved ones and others, and then I put on the other side, the vaccine and everything we can know today. Um, my, my personal decision was that I, I was ready to be vaccinated. So again, hope um, this is helpful to you, hopefully encouraging to you. 
uh, and, and one more time to say thank you for everything you do. Appreciate your time. Thank you.